Hello everybody, welcome back. How's it going? It is wonderful to see you all again. Welcome back to the channel. And we are of course still in stunning Scotland, Botany, Scotland. And I wanted to talk a little bit this week, uh, throughout this video, about these sorts of, I don't know what you'd call them, um, lengthy photography trips. You know, the ones where you might book a couple of days off work and you invest in it, you invest time and effort and money perhaps to get to a location just like this and yeah i just wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's something that always plays on my mind and um hopefully i can help one or two people out as well just turn this way i don't know how bright that sun's gonna be but yeah um today i'm just gonna enjoy the scenery really i'm pretty tired from yesterday or last week as you saw it uh, which is something that i'll get onto as well regarding these photography trips but yeah beautiful scenery uh, i want to try and utilize these beautiful scots pine trees again same as last week uh, i think we've had quite a lot of snow overnight on the hills on some of the munros so yeah i'm going to try and make the most of all this for my photography but first i need to find my gloves i was dilly dallying with my drone earlier and i left my gloves on the ground but as you can see oh, i've just spotted them oh my god that looks like it was planned honestly it wasn't there's the beauties. Can't be doing without these. Anyway, got the gloves sorted. And yeah, I'm just going to explore around this sort of marshy, boggy area here. Um, see if any of these trees take my fancy. And we'll get onto that subject in a bit. Come with me, guys. Let's go and explore. Oh wow, so what a stunning day. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I, was, I thought I'd stop here and do something a little bit different. Um, I've been eyeing up this tree, this beautiful Scots pine tree for about 15 or 20 minutes now um, to try and use it as a composition. Sorry, to use it in my composition. But it's not quite working. And I thought it'd be worth stopping and explaining to you guys why it's not working. I think that's a really good learning process to figure out why things aren't working and how you can make it work you know instead of i always seem to show you my compositions that do work so i think this might help one or two people out so this is obviously a beautiful tree um, it's a fantastic it's got a fantastic form and it's full of character it's leaning to the left slightly um, it's sort of left heavy which means if i can get set up anywhere around here somewhere i could have this beautiful tree leaning into those gorgeous mountains and that forest in the background so in that sense it's almost spot on now the only issue that I've got here is the tree is just too big. It's too big in comparison with the mountains in the background. The contrast doesn't quite work, the size contrast. and The balance isn't quite there. What I would do, if I could, is go higher up. If there was a bit of a sort of hill or mound here, I could change the perspective of the tree. So I'm almost shooting down on it, which would make the tree look smaller. But the mountains in the background, because they're so far away in the forest, would stay the same. And thus that will create the perfect left and right balance between the two subjects of the mountains and the tree here in the foreground. But unfortunately I can't do that. So if I was to take the photograph, it'd still be all right, but this tree would just be huge in the foreground on the right hand side and the mountains in the background would be way too small. So that's why it's not working in this particular situation. Um, so all I've got to try and do, it sounds really simple when I say it like that, but I'm exploring this area to find the right tree effectively. And there's loads of beautiful Scots pines uh, dotted about this sort of marshy landscape. So, like I say, it's just a case of trying to find the right tree. So I'm going to venture on down there uh, a little bit. I need to find a tree that's a little bit smaller, somewhere where I can get the perspective right, basically. But yeah, I hope that helps one or two years out. And let's continue with this adventure. Come with me. <laughs>
you and I we met a Tuesday morning Sun high in the sky and I felt free You did your best and I ignored the warnings and Fair enough, I guess I didn't want to see I wanted an adventure I wanted something new Right! So I think I've found my tree and I will say at this stage you know I'm not a hundred percent content with this image and even this composition you know it's middle of the day we've got quite harsh light conditions aren't anywhere as near as good as what we had last week in last week's video um, but it's still going to be a nice photograph and it's a nice little bit of compositional training for myself and hopefully one or two of you guys out there learn something from this but yeah I think I found everything that I wanted really in this sort of tree and uh, this sort of composition in general we've got these three trees here that are lined up and I'm using the one on the very very far left and which is leaning perfectly into that one mountain in the background that beautiful peak um, it's a really really nice contrast and I've got the height pretty much spot on it's took me a little bit of uh, time in this sort of area trying to tweak the composition and change the perspective but I think I've just about got it and what I love here is directly behind the tree is another peak which um, sort of comes down from that main peak that I'm using on the left hand side which is just full of snow it's incredible um, and I've had to adjust my composition of my tripod slightly so that the branches don't come down beneath that snowy peak so through that tree I'm capturing that gorgeous snowy mountain there in the background as well which is ideal um, so it is a nice simple composition I will say again you know it's it's not incredible it's not going to be amazing the light's very very harsh but this would be a nice place to come back to if I'm ever back in this area I'm here you know at a sunrise or a sunset during the golden hour and we're going to get some lovely light but yeah, um, settings were f11 1 60th of a second and ISO 100. Nice and simple, I'm not trying to achieve any effects or anything in this photograph. No long exposures or anything like that, it's pretty much just a snapshot. I've got my 18 to 55 millimeter lens on and I'm zoomed in at 55 millimeters. Just to not compress the image but try and eradicate anything on the left or right hand side. Or the top and bottom i'm only capturing exactly what i need really and that's pretty much the tree the forest and that beautiful mountain in the background nice and simple um so i'm gonna grab that shot now and i hope you guys like it So I'm just going to have a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a chill out. Um, I've just been through a really beautiful forest, uh, it's called the River Walk and really gorgeous. It's a little bit more of a substantial Scots Pine forest but still a lot of opportunity for, for landscape photography. So after this little chat that I'm planning on having, uh, I'm going to head back up there and try and get another fo another photograph hopefully. But yeah I wanted to sort of chat a little bit, chat a little bit about what I referenced at the start of the video and it's about the subject of these these dedicated photography trips, let's call them, you know, where you invest time and effort and money in them and you might book a few days off work and you get really excited about them. Now the issue that I've had in the past and I still do occasionally is um, the pressure that we tend to put on ourselves as landscape photographers when we do invest ourselves in these trips and what I mean by that is how you invest all this money, invest all this money, so for example this trip, although I probably wouldn't like to admit it and I often um, dismiss petrol costs and stuff probably looking at about 150 quid by the time I'm back home to Shropshire so you know it's a lot of money invested and then you've got the time you know by the time I get home you're looking at about 20 hours driving time it's crazy when you think about it and then the effort of the hikes and stuff 
and you get you, you tend to get this natural mindset of oh I need to make the most of this I need to make sure all this investment is worth it which don't get me wrong a little bit of pressure and a little bit of that is 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 a good thing you know to put a little bit of pressure on yourself to get good photographs but when that pressure becomes a little bit overwhelming I think it can be a really toxic mindset because it means that you're not going to enjoy your photography and it means as well you're going to be less likely to get good photographs at the end of the day so I kind of wanted to share a couple of pieces of advice really for anybody that might be thinking about organizing the first dedicated photography trip or perhaps somebody that's been on one or two and they felt they haven't been very successful and please note as well this is all very subjective so these are just things that really help me they might not help other people but you know I hope anybody any beginners out there will be able to take this on board and see if it works for them and um, the first thing really is planning I think planning is really important however on the other end of that I think over planning can also be a little bit toxic but again it's what works for you now obviously really briefly I'll explain the way I plan things um, I like to do what I call a loose plan so for two days which has been this trip up to Scotland I'll pinpoint maybe three or four locations and I'll make sure that I go to them which is really good because it gives me a, a focal point my first couple of photography trips I didn't do much planning so I got to these beautiful locations like we've had here Glen Africa and then yesterday uh, or last week's video was in West of Ross and I've just found myself really overwhelmed by the occasion and by the location and by the landscape which is a really nice feeling but at the same time I don't think it's very efficient and very productive um, for your landscape photography side of things and so I think it's good to have a, a bit of a loose plan where you can focus on one specific location but you've still got the freedom to move, move about and maybe change your plans a little bit but you haven't planned meticulously so that you've only you know you planned right down to perhaps your composition or your subject which is something that I do as well I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody but yeah I think the loose planning is something that's really really helped me it's really benefited me with these these photography trips and it's enjoyable as well to do a little bit of a plan uh, find a, maybe a small area that you might like to go with your camera and wander around um, so that would be my first bit of advice just a bit of loose planning secondly and this one's really simple and almost goes without saying but I think it's worth it just to sort of reassure or inspire somebody that might want to be booking their first dedicated photography trip and that is that things get better with experience I think this is probably my fifth or sixth dedicated photography trip now um, where I've stayed overnight since I've been back in the UK and first couple of photography trips weren't very productive I wouldn't say I always enjoy them but I think with the photography uh, they could have been better uh, better planned but yeah things get better with experience and you learn what works for you and yeah it's like anything really the more you practice you get more knowledgeable at things because there's a lot of planning involved as well um, as well as the photography you know you've got your accommodation um, your food like what you're going to eat you're going to bring your food with you and yeah um, I think it's, re it's, it's really important to know that things do get better as you get more experienced at it so if you've had one or two photography trips that have perhaps not been very successful don't let it get you down too much you know keep trying and try and grow um, in terms of your planning and things are only going to get better it really really is um, trust me on that one <laughs> so yeah I'm going to head back up to this forest back up to that river walk and try and get one more photograph of the day uh, it's really beautiful up there so come with me let's go and explore all right so I'm gonna grab another shot here guys and obviously we're in the same location we've got these beautiful trees as a subject uh, as subject sorry so it's gonna be quite similar to my first shot in many ways but I really don't mind um, I am just shooting this handheld because middle of the day pretty harsh light what was my shutter speed then 1 160th of a second really quick shutter speed and I'm using vibration reduction on this lens so there's just no need for me to use my tripod here at all um, quite similar to my first shot it's I'm trying to balance out one or actually two in this case uh, of these Scots pine trees with a mountain in the background we've got a different peak this time um, I actually prefer this one in comparison to the other one it's just absolutely gorgeous a little bit more rugged and a little bit more snow in it as well which is always good but yeah just shooting handheld and I've actually been shooting this one in a I'm just going to take my lens cap off it's really important to, um, 
yeah, I've just been, I've actually been shooting this in a portrait dimension, um, just so I can get the height of these trees in. And you can probably see here that these trees are incredible. The trunks are really, really straight. And then as it gets up to the branches there, it just leans in a leftward direction, which is great because it leans leftward and follows the curve of the mountain from right to left, which is just beautiful. So I'll just double check them settings. Uh, it's actually one two hundredth of a second. So even a little bit of a, a quicker shut speed there. And I'm just manually focus on, focusing on the, the tree that's closest to me. And another thing that's really important here is Let's grab that one shot there is I'm making sure that none of the branches are obstructing the mountain in terms of perspective so uh, these branches that are hanging down as the trees lean leftward I don't want them to be in front of the mountain I want a full view of the mountain there between them trees I'm just gonna grab one more shot um, so yeah quite like the first image you know the conditions aren't perfect not ideal quite harsh but a couple of nice photographs here and a really nice area that I'd love to come back to and spend more time when I'm not like too tired or you know I can dedicate a bit more time here um, I'll pop one one of them images up now whichever one I prefer um, and then I'm gonna start heading back to my car hope you like the shot guys mm -hmm. 